Hi everyone, this is Your CyberPath, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job. I'm Kip Boyle, and I'm an experienced hiring manager of cybersecurity professionals. If you want to give me feedback on the show, or if you want me to answer your question on a future episode, please visit the show page. It's at anchor.fm forward slash your cyber path. And when you get there, just click on the big message button and start talking. Today, we're wrapping up the fourth and final week of the initial version of our master class, and it's called How to Get Your Dream Cybersecurity Job as Told by Hiring Managers. And on today's episode, I want to share with you some insights from the fourth week. And we were focused on landing your dream job with great interviewing skill and negotiating your total compensation. Now, it's difficult enough to be offered an interview. So even though you've put in a ton of work and you're probably very tired, you want to stay strong as you transition from using uh, your resume to get attention from the hiring manager to selling yourself in person. So once the hiring manager chooses you to come in and have an interview, do not relax yet. In, in many ways, your need to, to perform with high energy uh, is even greater than it's been to this point. You also still need to negotiate a total compensation package that is going to set you up for success on the job. So uh, these are not small things that you need to do. Take a deep breath, gather your energy, and, uh, and, and get to it. Now, you probably remember that when, I, when I'm interviewing candidates, I'm looking for two things in particular, no matter which job it is that, uh, that I'm trying to fill. I want to know, do you have passion for this particular job? And can you be useful to the team on day one? And so your goal is to have compelling answers to these questions. And, um, and I'm going to use you know, many different ways to ask these questions. I'm probably not going to come out and ask those two questions. So, um, you know, so pay attention, but, but know that that's what I'm looking for. Now, you, you should not be holding back. You need to show enthusiasm and you need to tell me about all the cool stuff you've been doing to, um, you know, to demonstrate your passion. So perhaps you've been volunteering at cybersecurity conferences. Maybe you even spoke at one um, maybe you <clears throat> worked really hard and you got a really tough, relevant certification. So tell me about that. What was that like for you? And, um, you know, share some details and do it with enthusiasm. And don't forget to make it clear how you can solve the problems that this job that you want was designed to deal with. So as an example, if this is a vulnerability management program and this is a job within that program, then you need to tell me about your prior experiences finding and mitigating vulnerabilities that had no patch. I mean, most vulnerabilities, you deploy a patch and then you, you know, check to make sure that the patch worked. But, you know, tell me, I mean, that's not too hard relative to a vulnerability that has no patch. So tell me about that, you know, that time when you had to roll up your sleeves and really figure out how are we going to mitigate this thing that has no patch? Who did you work with? Whose help did you get? How did you collaborate? What was the end result? And I'm not looking for perfection. You know, I know in the real world, things don't always work the way that you expect them to. So tell me about that and tell me how you recovered from difficult situations. Okay, now, something that, that I believe makes a strong candidate in an in interviewing situation is when you bring insightful questions about us, the, the, the potential employer. Who are we and how do we work? I encourage you to think of a job as a relationship. And that means you need to make sure that we are a good fit for you. Because I guarantee you, we're trying to figure out if you're a good fit for us. We might think you are, but you may not be so sure. And if you don't ask the question, the only way you're going to find out is to 
uh, land the job and then give it a try. And, um, and even, even if you go into the interview asking questions about fit, it, it could turn out that the fit is, is not correct. I mean, I've had that happen before. So there's no silver bullet here, but you should absolutely be asking the questions, uh, do I really want to work for this employer? Okay, so that's about acing the interview. Now let's talk about negotiating your total compensation. There's, <laughs> there's more to talk about on this subject than we have time to in just one episode today. I'll do a whole future episode on, uh, on some uh, total uh, compensation uh, strategies and techniques, but let me offer you a couple of, of thoughts right now. Okay, so one of the most important things is you've got to remember that your current and prior compensation is irrelevant. The only thing that matters with respect to this new job that you're pursuing is the local market rate for that job. And the employer typically has a range of pay established. And they typically do that based on uh, market uh, salary surveys. Many companies actually have, if they're a medium, a large, large size organization, they've actually subscribed to a service that's, that delivers uh, timely, relevant market data. And this is not the stuff you're going to find on glassdoor.com or any salary survey sites. This is rigorous research salary data, and that's what they're using. They also know what people with comparable jobs in their organization, uh, they know that this, the total compensation that those people are receiving. And you don't know any of that. So it's it's a very uneven situation. But you've got to figure out how to navigate these waters. So, so that's one thing. And I'll talk about how to do that in a moment. But the other thing that you have to realize is that even though the uh, employer has all these advantages, they're still expecting you to negotiate. And so you've got to use that to your advantage, right? So don't, um, don't fail to negotiate and make sure that you negotiate uh, as well as you possibly can, because this is going to determine your compensation, not only for the rest of the time that you work at this employer, but it could could very well affect your compensation at subsequent employers. Okay, so this is a big deal. Now, you want to do your research to find out uh, as well as you can, you know, what, uh, what this job might be paying. And some things you can do is you can go to cyberseek.org, and there's some salary data there. Uh, based on job title. You could also go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and you'll get some you'll get some good data there. Now these are all uh, useful if you're going to work in the US. Now if you're working in another country I, I don't know exactly where you should go but you should find the equivalent sources for data. Another uh, thing that I want you to be aware of is make sure that the offer that you're given, once you negotiate an offer and, you're, and, it's, and it's presented to you, one of the things you have to make sure is that, is that the offer is localized to the city where you're going to work. Now, if you're not moving, if you're staying in the same city, this isn't nearly as important. But um, the cost of living in different cities is uh, different and sometimes very different. So, for example, if you're living in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're earning $58,000 per year, an equivalent salary in Seattle, where I live, is $75,000. So if you make the mistake of receiving a $65,000 a year offer and you, and you compare that to your current salary and then you move to Seattle, you're going to find that your, your way of life is going to go down, even though it seemed like a bigger number. It was an absolute bigger number, but it's just so much more expensive to live in Seattle. So, so you know, so pay attention to that. There are uh, cal free cost of living calculators on the internet. You just need to go and uh, and search for them. Try a couple of them, and and just make sure you don't make that mistake. Okay. Well, as I said, the master class is finished as of today, Friday, May first. We're going to reopen it. What we're doing is we're taking all the feedback that we that we we receive from students, and we're improving the lessons and moving to a new online delivery platform. And our goal is to be up and running no later than June first, preferably sooner. But as we get closer, I'll uh, share more about that with you later. Okay, that's enough for now. 
Uh, so until next time, remember, you're just one path away from your dream cybersecurity job.